I'd like to welcome everybody tonight to our city council meeting. Tonight's invocation will be given by John Palms, Kingsburg Task Force, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Before I start, I just want to share one thing, and that is that I was, I was asked the Lord, you want I'm supposed to pray for something. How am I supposed to pray? What do you want me to say? What's what's important? And um, and he he said to me this morning, he said, John, share with them. Um, a verse out of John 17, verse 3. And I love that verse because what it says is, um, Jesus said, this is eternal life, that they would know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. It's like a, it's a key verse for, and to me it felt important for the, the city council because it's like you guys have, you people have such authority over here, over the over the city and, and deciding you know, the decision, what needs to, what needs to happen to make our city work well. And God has amazing, amazing wisdom for you. And I just, and I thought, that's awesome that, that God really wants to be there for you. And so you, you get through whatever challenges are going to face you this year. He wants to do that. So let me pray. Father, I love that verse. It says, again, uh, Jesus, you were talking to your Father in heaven. You had the disciples there. And you said, this is eternal life, that they would know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. And to me, Lord, what you are showing me is that as these people here who are our council members, uh, other leaders of the city, um, they're, they're guiding and directing. They're saying, what's, what's going to be important for our city for the rest of this coming year and for the following year? And, Lord, I love it. I, I pray that there is so much wisdom would come to them as they make decisions, as they handle various situations that come up. I just pray for, for an amazing peace there, that they would, they would sense your, your guidance, your direction, they would know this is going to work, this is not going to work. And so, Lord, I bless them. I pray for amazing peace as they make their decisions, as they pour us through and decide what are the things we need to face this year and how do we face them. And so, Lord, I thank you for everyone. And again, I bless them and I pray all these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, John. I'd like to call this city council meeting to order. Abby, can you please take roll, to roll call? Present. Present. Here. Here. Next, approve the agenda. Action by council to approve the agenda or to make modifications. Items that can be added to the agenda is constrained by state law. Can I get a motion to approve, please? Second. Got a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Agenda is approved. Next on our agenda, we have a presentation tonight, one presentation by our Kingsburg Fire Department. Chief, please come up. Good evening, Mayor Palomar, members of council, also esteemed members of the community and members of the fire department. Tonight I stand before you to recognize an individual of the fire department that has uh, given a specific thing to our community, a part of his life, and to be recognized specifically for that, it'd be 30 years of service. If we think about that, three decades, think 30 years back, when would that be for you? What were you doing 30 years ago? Many of us either were just starting our careers, just thinking about what we were doing. This individual has specifically done that. It started year, literally 30 years ago as of, what was it, June, I think, 19th. So a month to the, well, 30 years and, an, and a month at this point. Could I have officially Alan Wayne Osborne, captain for the Kingsburg City Fire Department, please come to the front. Tonight, Captain Osborne, you're being recognized specifically for your service to your community. And I do want to read this proclamation verbatim because I think it has a lot of really uh, valuable content to explain why we're recognizing you. A proclamation of the City Council of the City of Kingsburg proclaiming appreciation for Kingsburg Fire Department Captain Alan Wayne Osborne for his 30 years of service. Whereas Fire Captain Alan Wayne Osborne has been a Kingsburg resident his entire life, 
Born in the original Kingsburg Hospital, Captain Osborne has lived just outside the city within the sphere of influence of Kingsburg for his entire adult life. And whereas Captain Osborne is being recognized for his 30 years of service to the Kingsburg Fire Department that began in June of 1993 as a volunteer firefighter and ambulance attendant when the department was a full-time volunteer fire department. And whereas in 2003, the city's first professional firefighter EMTs were hired and after 11 years of volunteer firefighting and EMT ambulance operator service, he was hired as a full-time firefighter in 2004. Captain Osborne progressed through the ranks due to his dedication, knowledge, and professionalism. He was promoted to the position of fire captain in 2012. And whereas Captain Osborne has been instrumental in innumerable projects over the years, including designing and procuring new fire apparatus and being the lead fire investigator, Captain Osborne is viewed as the face of the Kingsburg Fire Department, truly. Captain Osborne manages the ever-growing fleet of fire apparatus and ambulances, the department's critical communications and radios, supervises the fire prevention and investigation groups, as well as the community risk reduction team and outreach programs. And whereas Captain Osborne's tireless efforts and dedication to the community, department, and fire service are without adequate measure. For this reason, we would like to recognize Fire Captain Alan Wayne Osborne for his truly invaluable 30 years of dedicated service to his community. Now, therefore, it be proclaimed that the City Council of the City of Kingsburg, with deep appreciation, does hereby and sincerely thank Captain Alan Wayne Osborne for his hard work and dedication to the Kingsburg Fire Department, the City of Kingsburg, and citizens of Kingsburg for the last 30 years on this date, July 19th. 2023. And as a token of that, one of the symbols of his 30 years of service is a gold dollar horse with three jewels in it. A beautiful little symbol. Thank you, sir. actually go to the front and give you this and I think uh, you have a signed copy of it and some portion of it. Yes. We have another one that's going to be a more official one that has the embossed piece of the Don't you need the curls? Got him. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Chief.
Well deserved, Wayne. I'd just like to make a comment to Wayne real quick. Um, I was lucky enough in 1994 to buy a house in, here in Kingsbury, my first home, and still my home. And Wayne lived right next door to me. So for about 15 years before he moved, we were uh, next door neighbors. And uh, Wayne, back then, the siren would go off, and you'd see Wayne and uh, a couple other neighbors take off and you know go down the fire to, fire station, jump in the truck or an ambulance and stuff, how it used to be. And then uh, I know Wayne was very excited when he was telling me about when the city was going to have a full-time fire department. And, uh, of course, Wayne was one of the first guys hired, you know. And Wayne's not, not, not only an asset to our community as a fireman, but he's a better friend. So congratulations, Wayne. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Uh, public comment. This is time for any citizen to come forward and address the city council on any issue within its jurisdiction that is not listed on the agenda. A maximum of five minutes is allowed for the speaker. Is there anyone that would like to come forward and address the city council this evening on any? Okay, come on up. Just please state your name if you're if you're a resident. Sorry. I'm Mayor, Council, staff. My name is Matthew Tuttle. I'm a resident of Reedley, not Kingsburg, um, but I'm here as the chief of staff for our Assemblyman Mathis, um, Devin Mathis. Kingsburg is relatively new in our district, and so one of, one of the tasks that that I have is to come out and introduce myself to you guys, uh, to you guys and make sure that you guys are aware that um, one of my jobs is to be a bridge to the state, um, whether it's policy, um, legislation, helping to get an application through or not sure why, whatever. Um, I gave my cards, my business cards to your city clerk um, to pass out, and so keep that in mind. Sometimes it would be appropriate, um, and if you're not sure, then then shoot me a message or a, a email or something like that, and I'd love to also to um, uh, catch up or um, get a cup of coffee with you guys. Same, um, Alex as well, city manager. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else here like to address the city council on comment tonight, public comment? No? Okay, I will close public comment. Next, we have consent calendar. Items considered routine in nature are to be placed on consent calendar. They will, they will be considered as one item and voted upon in one vote unless individual consideration is requested. Each vote in favor of consent calendar is considered and recorded as a separate affirmative vote in favor of each action listed. Approval of consent calendar items include recital reading, reading ordinances by titles only and adoption of recommended action contained in staff reports. Is there any council member that would like to pull a consent calendar item? Anybody from our public that would like to pull a consent calendar item? Seeing none, okay. Then can, oh, tonight we have 5.1 through 5.9. Make a motion to pass the consent calendar. Got a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries, consent calendar is approved. Regular calendar, 6.1. Fiber optic broadband update. Staff report by City Manager Alex Henderson. Presentation by Reggie Gerke, President, Kingsburg Media Foundation. You're up. You're up. <laughs> You're up, Reggie. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, city staff, thank you uh, for having me up here again. I, I always enjoy standing here. Uh, <laughs> but it's uh, that time again to uh, do an update for you guys on where we're at with the uh, fiber project. So uh, if you can go to the next one, we only have a couple slides, so we'll make this real easy tonight. Uh, this is our map, as you've seen probably several times now. Uh, it looks a little different this time because it's got some uh, good construction update within it. So the blue lines that you see are completed construction. And the areas that are kind of, it looks like it's a highlight of that tan color that is still pending construction. So as of right now, I both, fa our phase one is basically complete from a construction and fiber standpoint. And we've uh, started connecting clients to that, which I'll get a little more uh, detail on that here uh, a little bit later. Uh, phase, that, that's the downtown and 
I guess you could call it like the original Kingsburg, the old Kingsburg area. Uh, and then uh, Northeast Kingsburg is our phase two. That's sitting at about 34% uh, remaining. So that's uh, mostly done on the construction side. And phase three is the West Kingsburg area. And that um, is about 34% uh, complete. So those kind of are just opposite of each other. And that, that's uh, mostly on uh, track with what we, what we were expecting at this time. Um, I'll give some more details here in a little bit. Uh, one thing to keep in mind when we talk about construction, we're really talking about the, hey, we're pulling the, the conduit through the ground. We're digging the holes. We're, we're making the mess that everybody sees. Uh, following the construction is the overpull part of the fiber infrastructure. That's a couple of guys standing on the sidewalk pushing fiber through. Uh, so it's, it's almost non-existent. Uh, a landscaper is probably more obtrusive than, than that portion of it. And then the final portion of it is the deployment of the, the final connections to the end user, to the, uh, the customer. Uh, and that's, that's us and that's coming out as we have uh, uh, interest and appointments and, and so forth. Uh, uh, so uh, if you wanna go to the next one for me. Uh, it, it's, I know it's tiny, there's a lot there, I'm sorry, but uh, uh, this kind of gives us an idea of where we're at uh, uh, time-wise. If you look, we started uh, construction right there near uh, mid-March. Uh, these locations down here are all phase one locations. Those are all complete. Those circuits are turned on uh, and we're utilizing them already. Uh, the next set that you see coming over, that's uh, phase uh, three. As you can see, we're, we're on task, or sorry, phase two. As you can see, we're on task uh, with what we're expecting uh, that to be done by the end of July. Uh, and then phase three for, this is construction again, by the way. Um, phase three, you can see, again, it lines up with about the 34% of that being done. Uh, we were originally hoping to have all construction done before the end of July. We did run into a few issues, as I'm sure you guys have heard, um, found a few things in the ground that we didn't know were there. Uh, the contractors didn't know, uh, the utilities that they belonged to, they weren't even aware of most of them. So uh, some of those slowed us down a little bit, uh, fixing a few things. But uh, we fully anticipate construction for phase three being, again, no later than the end of August. Uh, with that being said, we know school starting. Uh, phase three will include the area of Reagan School and Roosevelt School. Construction around Roosevelt School is done. Uh, and most of the construction, can you go back to the map for me, please? Most of the construction around um, Reagan School is also done. There's a little bit of a lead up there, uh, but it, it shouldn't have an impact on traffic for schools. Uh, one component that's slowed us down significantly for phase three are our uh, Caltrans permits. So I believe that we have the phase two Caltrans permit, the last one we needed, which is to get to the well that's by uh, um, Chinese Pagoda there across the street from uh, Walgreens area. Uh, that we're supposed to have this week. Uh, and as soon as we have that, that part will be done. Uh, and then Omni will have quite a bit of phase two completed. Phase three is uh, still pending uh, from Caltrans. It's already been reviewed. There's a couple of things they wanna see done, uh, changes on those permits, uh, but it's also in traffic review too for them. So we anticipate maybe a week on that. So hopefully by the end of next week, we'll have that last permit. And that's gonna be the crossing under Highway 99 there on CR Street and then the crossing under Highway 99 uh, on Draper Street. Uh, again, those are, those are big major intersections, so we're trying to make sure we get all of that done before school starts, because uh, we know traffic gets to be a little fun that time of year. Uh, so that's, that's on track to not uh, be, be a problem for us. Uh, as for the, I can go ahead and go back to the next one there for me, thank you. Uh, so as you can see, um, our client installs are ongoing. We've got quite a few up already. I uh, go to the next slide for me. I uh, give you a little bit of an update on that. Uh, uh, right now, this is 
well, this this was as of a couple of days ago. Uh, we have maybe a couple more numbers to go with that. But on the residential side, keep in mind phase, phase one is pretty heavy business area versus residential, so it, it changes a little bit. But uh, currently we have 11 active residential customers. I think that's actually 13 as of today. Uh, and uh, across the three phases, there's a breakdown of a number of existing customers or customers that have pre-signed up uh, to be switched over. So we've got a, about 135 uh, that we can switch as the build-out gets completed. Uh, phase one, we have 39, and we have plans already working, and we're working daily to add more every day. So. We're making it there. So when you look at that, we've got about 8% of our residential customers converted. Granted, we don't have all the infrastructure yet, so there's we can't convert them all. But uh, when we look at the business side, we have 28 active businesses. I'd like to say we have a have a pretty good chunk of all of downtown. <laughs> Draper Street, uh, uh, we've, we've made really good progress on getting good adoption on it. Uh, and we've been hearing nothing but good things. So. Uh, no, no significant issues uh, with it, even on the early phases of it being built. That being said, we have about 36 businesses left to uh, uh, transition. As you can see, phase one, there's a few of them still. Uh, phase two, not as many businesses up there, but then phase three, we have some, uh, some in the business park and uh, some along the uh, two, uh, I guess it would be Sierra Street corridor that's still there. Uh, that being said, 44% of our businesses that are either current customers of ours or pre-signups are already converted. So we're making some good progress on those. Uh, so when you look at that, and we we can say right now we have about a hundred and almost uh, almost two hundred uh, customers already that are going to be part of the program. So uh, as construction's completed, we're getting them onboarded as quick as we can. So. I think that's a pretty good number for not even having the project fully usable yet that we have 200 that are already sitting there ready for us. So a uh, good adoption rate on that point. As more and more construction gets done, more and more um, marketing is taking place uh, for that too. Uh, we uh, have been in conversation with the school district um, to try to get some information in the back to school packets um, and keeping it uh, to be kind of a twofold situation where we want uh, not only to market what we're doing, but also bring awareness to the affordable connectivity program too. Uh, whether it's with us or not, we want to make sure that um, that information is getting out to everybody because everybody that has a kid in school will qualify for that system. The uh, I know there was some concern about the sign-up process. It seems like the website changes on a daily basis with what you have to do. Uh, one of the things that's needed is supporting documentation that your student's eligible for free lunches. I've worked with the uh, school district, uh, Sarah Ballard. She's working on putting a form letter together for us uh, that will actually be on the school's website. So anybody signing up, regardless of who the carrier is, they can go get that form letter, and that's the supporting documentation that they need. Uh, a lot of lot of uh, people. There's a lot of confusion with ACP on is it income driven or is it program driven? It's it's really both. It's it can be both or it can be either. It, it depends on everybody's situation. So if you feel like if anybody's, I probably make too much money. I'm not going to qualify. So, uh, go through the process anyways because there's a lot of different options that will that you can qualify through so uh, how much is that, that affordable thing? that's the that's the thirty dollar uh, coverage and I don't mean to interrupt but I'm just no you're fine numbers real quick. so if you take your basic household internet mm -hmm. is a seventy five dollar monthly fee if someone does qualify for the ACP they're taking off thirty dollars of that Correct. If, they, if they're qualifying for ACP, they're probably also qualifying for our student or senior discount uh, plan, which is the $50 plan already. So they'd be taking $30 off of that. So they would be paying $20 a month for that service. Okay. And because I think that is so important, I am going to ask that you talk a little bit about what general qualifiers. I know that what you're saying, you're not representative of that. I understand all that, so I'll give you that out. But just for people that are listening, I think it's important that they understand 
give us scenarios in which people would most likely qualify to get married. Because I think there is a lot of confusion with sure. They think that it has to be somebody who is low income to qualify. Right. So for are, are you particular to ACP or the student? Um, well, the student is any student or senior, okay. right? Yeah, student or senior. That's pretty pretty self explanatory. Um, and for the most part, we're going to take you at your word on that part of it. Uh, and that's anything from preschooler to uh, college student. They're going to qualify as a student. A, and that could be, I don't know, if Abby's going back to college to get another degree, she would qualify <laughs> as a student at that point. Um, and then on the senior standpoint, it's, I mean, if you can order off the back of Denny's menu, you're, you're good to go. Um, yeah, th yeah. Yeah, 65 and older is what we're doing there. Now, when it comes to ACP, there's a lot of different qualifiers. Uh, the easiest way to look at it is from an income standpoint, I think it starts, uh, it, it follows fairly closely with like the earned income credit when you do your tax return. Uh, so it's based on the number of people within your household. I think if it's one person, it's about 46,000 a year. Um, and under would qualify, and then for each additional person in the household, I believe it's almost ten thousand dollars per person. So, uh, it's that's the income side of it. Now, the programs that uh, automatically qualify you, regardless of income, is if you're receiving any social security benefit, if you're receiving any social security disability, if anybody in the household is too, not just the primary household person. If you have a child that receives. Uh, a social security disability benefit, you're, they're going to qualify that way. If grandma's living with you and she's on social security, you, you can use that too. Um, uh, so social security benefits, any of the EBT or SNAP, uh, like the food stamp uh, options. If you are eligible for um, Medi Medicaid, not Medi-Cal, Medicaid, uh, basically it's all the federal programs uh, that it looks at, not necessarily the state programs. Uh, so Medic Medi-Cal, or Medicaid, sorry, you'd be eligible and uh, reduce, free or reduced uh, meals um, in accordance with if the school district that you're in is certified. And I know our school district was all last year and I, they're in the process of renewing it this year, but I don't think it's gonna be an issue to get that. That's where I'll see the clarification. So I think that's where some of the confusion is. If your kid goes to school in Kingsbury, they qualify for free lunches. Yeah. Right. That, right. And if so they the qualify high for school program, even if they go to the preschool program in the district, they don't get free lunch. You know, it's yeah. a school age, so right. PK through high school, they all get it. So anyone in, paying for lunch. in Kingsbury, <laughs> TK through high school, yes, they qualify for the free lunch program. And if you qualify for that program, you will likely qualify for ACP. Am I understanding that correctly? 99%, yes, you will qualify. I'm, I can't guarantee it every time because it's still it's a government program, but yeah. It's just one of those to where it's, I, I really want families to understand that your kid in school is going to give you this opportunity to go yeah. and have $20 a month on now. Right. Most yes. of them. Right. That, that's exactly the, that's I think that's exactly the point. that's a very, very important thing for us to push out. And I'm going to bring it up every single time you give an update. Oh, yeah, please do. Yeah. I, I really think that's going to make the program successful. Right. And that's why we're really pushing it with the school. Um, as kids are going back to school, that whole idea is fresh in their mind. And it's really good timing because we're going to be in a really good position to onboard people when school is starting uh, based on the construction schedule as of now. So, um, yeah, that's, that's really our big our big push is that ACP part because that is a really big component for a lot of different reasons. Um, it uh, it makes the it, it makes a guarantee on sustainability of the program because we're going to get that thirty dollars every month per person, regardless of what else takes place in that situation. So um, it gives us a little bit more flexibility too if it comes to um, a situation where. It's a household that the twenty dollars is even a difficulty for them, uh, and we work again with the school and CAPS and different organizations to to accommodate that as best we can too. So, um, I always tell everybody go on the website, 
go through the process, make sure you remember what social security number you used, what ID form you used, because we have to then, when we sign them up, we have to enter that information again as a process of verifying it. We have ran into a little bit of a problem um, where they sign up using their child and they use their child's social security number, but then when they contact us to enroll, uh, they give us their driver's side. license and then it says they don't exist and then there's confusion. So uh, best thing anybody can do is when they fill out the application on, on the ACP website is print it out and hang on to it and worst case scenario, they can come into our office and, and walk through it. Uh, we are also in the process of setting up uh, a computer uh, right in our entryway there. So if somebody doesn't have a computer or doesn't feel comfortable doing it and they want somebody to help them with it, they're more than welcome to come by the office and we'll walk them through it. Uh, another component of that is we are working with the Fresno State Foundation. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but it's really a uh, way that they uh, they work with the community. One of the biggest programs they're running right now is ACP signups. They're going places, they're holding, um, uh, I don't know what you would call them, uh, they're holding workshops where people can come and just get signed up and they walk them through the process and they help them find a provider that's uh, in their area to take care of it. So we've been working with them on uh, getting them to come to Kingsburg to, to do some of those workshops also. Uh, alongside uh, Fresno Housing Authority too. So when we look at Linnea Villas and Marion Villas, uh, being able to accommodate and help uh, those families and residents in those areas too. So trying to trying to get the word out there, trying to help people and, and, and really like, like you said, the biggest thing is, is just you at least try to sign up. And if there's something missing, don't hesitate to call. Um, we can help figure out what what you need to make that happen because most likely you will qualify. I would say probably 80 to 90 percent of our residents here in town would qualify. So it's a good thing. It's a really good thing. Um, if I could give anything else on that. I'll, I'll save the rest for later. Then. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is where we're at right now in uh, in our transition process. We've been doing a little bit of marketing, but we've been keeping it uh, kind of close to the areas where we know uh, we can get service, you know, within a week or two. Uh, we don't want to leave people hanging too long on it, uh, especially if we end up with any type of delays, because that just breeds frustration, right? When you keep getting told it's, oh, it's going to be another week, it's going to be another week. So we don't want to do that, but uh, I'm trying to remember what's on my next page. Oh, that's the plans again. Um, you can You can go back up to the that I, uh, that's basically the easiest way I can uh, to, can bring it in. I've been working with the uh, city manager uh, on coming up with the best way to do reporting back to the city uh, for the take rate portion of the agreement. We've uh, had customers active uh, since April, so we're going through those numbers and getting all those details worked out to start getting that money back to the city as a result of uh, uh, that process. So I think that was, was it, anything else? So our map, <coughs> at least the map that we have. Like this is new as of five o'clock today. Okay, yeah. say, <laughs> it doesn't match the one we have. Right. Um, so it, it's probably just, I missed it, but specifically to the areas around like 18th, to Madsen, Cam, Sierra, fish areas. How long is it before that area is up and running to where they're connected? So we've got uh, equipment active at the pool as of uh, Friday. Uh, so we're gonna start building north from the pool. Uh, it takes, we're kind of like building- node at the pool? Yeah, right? node at the pool, yeah. So. What we're gonna do is we're, we're looking at our map. I've got a, uh, um, I'm, I'm gonna say the next uh, update I give you guys, we're gonna have a, have a really good map of where our nodes are at, what's active, and kind of some basic subscriber coverage areas too. Uh, it's very spotty right now just because there's not all the infrastructure in place to, to do it the correct way, do it well. Um, that's one thing I'm 
I'm really focusing on, and Robert will agree with me here, we're not going to put it someplace until we know it's ready to be there. Uh, but as we're doing that, so we've already started that process of building north out of, out of the pool area. Uh, as my, my goal, my goal, depending on how all the construction goes, is to have uh, everybody that is either current customer or a potential customer ready to go and, and running by the end of September into October. It was kind of that, that yes. time frame. The whole city. The whole city. And because as we have it now, we have people spread out everywhere. Uh, it's not that we have, oh, we have a big concentration here, so we're going to focus on that. They're, they're spotty everywhere. So as we go, it's going. We do have a couple of hurdles, but we do have uh, some workarounds for them. It just may not lend to as reliable as I would want it to be, but I, it's not going to be unreliable as far as the customer can tell. It just I, I, We're going to lose a little bit of our redundancy that we were hoping for, and that's uh, three locations that we're going to wait for PG&E for, and we know how that is. So you're still um, shooting for citywide coverage October? October. We will. 23. October of 23. <laughs> <laughs> 23. No, uh, <laughs> no that, that, is, that is our goal. Um, and as, as it's looking now, it's, it's obtainable. Uh, really, honestly, it's the construction and the overpull and those initial root uh, nodes, as we call them, uh, that are the time-consuming part. From there on out, it's a matter of adding them to a street light pole that's already out there, and that's you know 10, 15 minutes of work um, as we build it. So it's it's pretty simple to start doing all the relays and the meshing from there. Oh, only, a, only one more thing. Okay. So it's obviously a public-private partnership. So I'm going to ask also for our accountability. Is there something on the city side? that is slowing you down or is becoming an issue that we need to work through? I think we, yeah, I think we got through everything that, yeah, the and permits went as, you know, as well as expected. Um, I think, I've, again, it's Caltrans that we're waiting on, but we have a target, or we have a, we have affirmation from them of when they expect to have that. I, from a PG&E standpoint, who knows? I submitted applications with them probably six months ago, and it it, it hasn't moved since then. So, um, if you know anybody there that we can grease some wheels or something, that'd be that'd be great. Uh, in the meantime, we do, like I said, we do have some plans to um, overcome that. It's just going to have some minor effect on uh, more than anything, probably just the public safety cameras, because we won't be able to have power at those locations to also support the cameras. Do we have anybody from the public that would like to comment on this agenda item? No? Okay, thank you. Um, any more council discussion? It is. It's a it's a pretty saturated uh, market, to be honest with you. There's a lot of options out there, and uh, everybody knows the big names. So coming in here and trying to prove that we can do it too is uh, it's a fun challenge. So. so I realize like they could be paying you twenty dollars for something that they are paying well over a hundred dollars for, mm -hmm. and that's going to change a lot of people's minds. Yeah. And, and we've been, like I said, we're working with Fresno Housing Authority and coming into especially the developments that they're in because uh, we can do other things like Lifeline Telephone and all that that comes with it too. So uh, it's not just Internet. It's phone. It's TV um, as you need. And then, like I told them, it's, it's not just a, hey, here's your Internet, have fun. Um, it's more of a, hey, here's your Internet, what else can we help you with? Uh, it's more of a that's one thing we really pride ourselves on is our customer service is, is very different uh, from that standpoint and we want to make sure that the education piece is there also it's not just okay great you now have a computer but you have no idea what to do with it 
it may not be us doing it all the time because we do have other partners that we're going to come alongside. Like Fresno State Foundation is a good example, but we can definitely be that conduit to, to make sure that gets taken care of. So we have, yeah, we're um, they're still in contract. I think through next year, yeah, if I remember right, but. We're actually going to probably be providing some backup services for them too, so it should be an easy transition when that time comes. <laughs> so, yeah, excellent. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Reggie. Right, thank you. Good presentation. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we have six point two, program year, twenty twenty four twenty five community development block grant project discussion. <clears throat> Staff report: City Engineer Dave Peters presentation. By Dave Peters. Yeah. Good evening, Mayor, members of council. Um, so the uh, County of Fresno is uh, soliciting proposals for the program year 2024-25 CDBG program. So this program funds infrastructure improvements such as street repairs, alley repairs, curb and gutter sidewalk type repairs, and other things um, in eligible neighborhoods. So we have one eligible neighborhood based on their demographic. It's bounded by Mailer, 6th, and 99. So generally that triangular area. Um, but you can also do um, projects that benefit the community as a whole. <clears throat> so that would be like in you know central parks and those sorts of things. So staff has uh, evaluated all the uh, eligible type of, of projects and has identified uh, the Memorial Park restroom uh, renovating or rehabilitating those those restrooms at Memorial Park as a candidate project for for this um, for this cycle. The um, the restrooms were origi originally constructed in 2002. Um, they've been subject to vandalism and substantial wear over the years since then. Um, upgrades are needed to pre preserve the usefulness and functionality of the restrooms and also to meet ADA and current building code um, requirements. Uh, an alternative to um, remodeling the restrooms would be to replace them with a uh, prefabricated building, similar to what we're doing at Athwell Park. And actually, that building's going to be set tomorrow. So <laughs> we've got that on our agenda. Um, so it, it would be the, the project would, would include either or, either rent, uh, remodeling or uh, replacing uh, with, a, with a, new, a new building. Um, the advantages of, of a new building would be that. Um, it would be easier to manage, maintain, and would be less susceptible to van vandalism than, than the other restrooms. We, we, would, uh, we, we were looking at a, a restroom that would have like four different um, single-use restrooms, and so Public Works could open up, you know, one or two of those at a time instead of just, you know, having, you know, four or five water closets and three sinks, you know, open to the public all the time. Um, so that would minimize some of the vandalism and the, and the use. Um, rehabilitating the existing restrooms is anticipated to cost about $290,000. Replacing them with a new building would be $400,000. Our current fund balance in the CDBG program is $110,000. We get about $54,000 a year right now. So um, by the time the project actually got to construction, it would be a couple years from now. That's just how long it takes to get through the county process. And so there would be a, a, a funding shortfall, which could either be made up with local funds or um, the city could borrow CDBG funds from another agency that's not going to submit an application this cycle. So we basically would borrow those, those funds, do the project, and then we would pay those funds back to, to that, that agency in future years. So. Tonight we're, we're asking for direction to um, designate the Memorial Park Restroom Project as, a, as, the, uh, as the, the project in the application to be submitted to the county. A uh, couple of council options would be to not submit an application this cycle at all and just kind of let our funds roll over and build our, build our pot up a little bit or to select a separate project. Like I said, that would be um, limited to that one eligible neighborhood that we have and, and you know, could be street, project, alley, reconstruction, sidewalk type, type stuff. So um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Question from council. I have a question. Um, to make 
make up the difference? Could we, because if we did the prefab documents, because it is new, mm -hmm. could we access the funds um, that the new subdivision put into for green space? I don't remember the answer on that one, but I might have it before. I know we can't read it. Yeah. Use impact fee uh, dollars, but uh, not like oh, our CFD way. dollars. Those are designated to those particular areas. If it was new, but not a <coughs> project, not a maintenance project. That's the stipulation for the impact dollars, correct? Correct. It has to be new, so we would have to build <coughs> new or bring in new prefab. New. Yeah. Could we then use CDBG dollars to take the current restroom? and do something with that with CDBG dollars? Well, you could use CDBG dollars to do, I mean, I think if you did a new prefabbed restroom, we would, part of the 400,000 is to rehab the existing restroom so that those could be used for storage or some other purpose. And so you could use CDBG, D, we could figure that out. We're gonna use our total amount because we don't have, we only get $55,000 a year. Um, I think what we, what we would need to figure out because as Dave alluded to, the county has to expend all of their funds, CDB, CDBG dollars, every single year. And so if they don't, uh, they lose their allocation, right? So what we end up doing, because we only get $55,000 a year, when we don't submit a project, we are essentially loaning it to the other participating communities, and then they, we, we always get that back in a future year's allocation. And so we, would, we could potentially do that too, whereby we wouldn't spend any of our local dollars, be it impact fee dollars or anything. We would just borrow in future years and then in future year allocations for CDBG we bonds, submit. Uh, we would just be paying that back over time, right? So it just kind of depends upon what's a, you know what other projects and there's meetings of the county and with all those other communities of, as to what they're doing. Um, and then there's, you know, for lack of a better term, there's term is sort of horse trading that occurs to make sure that those funds are expended mm -hmm. every single year. Is that CDBG dollar amount the same every year, no matter what? Or it it varies a little bit. It's been going down. Yeah, so, so. It's, yeah, it's dependent upon, um, you know, so it's, it's census, the American uh, census survey, the ACS that they do, and it's based upon poverty uh, rates, it's based upon um, a homelessness count and population allocation. So there's a formula and uh, but we used to get you know between eighty five and ninety thousand dollars a year, but um, more recent um, ACS has our allocation has shrunk. So it's possible that those numbers could go up if those numbers change in future years. But I wouldn't anticipate it going up by large amounts. So the four hundred thousand um, estimate includes rehabbing the existing restrooms. Yeah, I, I, I apologize. I should have mentioned that. Yeah, it includes demoing out all the restroom equipment and basically do it, repairing the walls and making it so that it could be used for maintenance. Storage. Maintenance, as a maintenance room, basically. Maintenance rooms. I had only seen the women's bathroom. I just saw, you know, the pictures of the men's bathroom, which are basically what they CDBG dollars, if we were to do that, we're talking about the process realistically from time that we approve that until time that we are completed, well over two years, is that safe to say? Yeah, we, if we submit the application now, essentially we, we, won't, we won't enter in a, into an agreement with the county until probably 14 months from when we submit the application because they do the environmental it takes them a while um, the agreements have to go to the board of supervisors and then we get to start on the project and it essentially takes about a year to get it designed and constructed after that so. and if we use impact fee dollars for something like that what does that timeline look like well if you don't use any of the county <laughs> funding then you know council could direct that funding uh, at a future meeting and start right away. You just have to do a budget amendment because it's not currently budgeted. Right, and, uh, and that's a big hit on the impact of dollars. I, I understand that. But <clears throat> what I'm wondering is if there's a hybrid between the two. If we can use impact fee dollars to get the new restroom set, 
CDBG dollars to demo and rehab the current facility. To where, you know, if that's going to end up being a storage, but there's demolition, there's other costs associated with it, and let's say that's $100,000 worth of work, use our CDBG dollars for that. And then if we were to take 300000 out of impact fee, then we're going to get a usable restroom in a shorter amount of time. I think the question would be whether or not <clears throat> that would be an eligible use of those funds to just rehab that restroom into a storage space, right? A, a restroom with uh, ADA capabilities is is eligible. So mm. I'm not sure how we would potentially parse that out as part of our application. So that's, that's just a really long time to not have a usable restroom in that part of my concern. We're talking about it being you know, 2026 before we're really probably using that. Yeah, because Dave, the environmental, so the environmental would occur a, yeah, a year from now? Yeah, typically say. we've submitted applications in July and sometime in October we bring the agree October of the next year we bring the agreement to the council to, to approve and then we get started. So potentially okay. maybe spring of 2025? Yeah, yeah, we could start construction in spring and maybe, you know, finish by Memorial Day of 2025. Yeah, because the environmental, because yeah. it goes through HUD, it, it's, a, it's basically yeah. a year, which is, you know, this is the 2024-2025 allocation. We're having the conversation, you know, in July of 2023. If we use the impact fees, um, kind of as a budget, what, would, what programs would we potentially use to offset the new facilities for the rest of the year? Um, you know, any eligible, I mean, it's for, it's for, you know, we'd be pulling from the park, um, impact fee fund and so you know whether that's a future sports complex or other new amenities that the council wanted to consider at other park facilities those I mean you know it just becomes a prioritization of of those dollars so it's it kind of just depends so we don't have anything planned currently there's not uh, and I think there's some, probably some of those dollars that we've already allocated, you know, I, you know Shade structure. towards path wall. You know, we've rejected a portion of that bid so that we can just get uh, to where we need to. But I think the intent was to use some of those dollars to finish out those connections, which we're hopeful is not a huge amount. But um, that's the only project currently. Uh, it's the, you know, we've the council has had discussion on adding shade structure at Heritage uh, previously. You know, we have some grant uh, applications out currently, and so dependent upon that, it, that would be, you know, a discussion that council would, could consider if that was a, a project that was, you know, that you wanted to see. So for tonight's agenda item, <coughs> if we were to direct staff to designate this as a CDBG project, we're not locking ourselves into it all coming out of CDBG. We're not, or is this something that, you know, because I, I think part of this is also going to be, I want to see the bathrooms that are coming into Athwell Park. I want to see whether or not we think that they're going to be a right fit for Memorial Park. I mean, there's just a little bit more. For even if we were to give staff direction for that tonight, we're just wondering how much that locks us into this being our CDBG project. Yeah, the application is due on the 31st of July. So it was a pretty quick, I mean, they just, sent it out and it's due, so oh. um, yeah, yeah, we, we, we would need to know what project we're going after kind of soon. Yeah, we actually received the packet in, after our last meeting in June, and we didn't have a first meeting in July, so that's the <laughs> difficult part of the short turnaround. Um, you know, one of the things that we did clarify with the county was whether or not we had to make a decision on which route for the restroom, so the council just says, you know, hey, we don't want the new prefab version we just want to do a rehab that is something that we can figure out in the design phase whereby it, or you can go the other route too but um, you know the, we're just looking for direction on if that's the project that you would like to seek if it's you know as Dave mentioned no project and we're just rolling the money forward or if it's uh, a separate project in that eligible area which would be like a street or an alley or something in that zone Could CDBG, if it rolls over, be used towards um, a shape structure at Heritage for um, amenities at a sports complex? 
I don't know about the sports complex. I'd have to learn more about that. Heritage, I don't think so because I think they would probably consider that a, more of a neighborhood or area type park. The reason why it's eligible in Memorial Park is because that's like a central park that benefits the whole town. So it includes the people that live in that eligible area. So, yeah. Hmm. We're trending down on those numbers. Yeah. That's my concern is if that's, if you get higher amounts based on poverty, I think we're fortunately winning that battle, but funding wise, I think we're losing it. But if you look at the, I, I'm not sure where they get their funding from because, or their numbers from, because as a school district, our numbers have shot up high enough that we're falling, qualifying for a lot of other grants that we used to not qualify for. Our percentage, they still do the applications for free in the new slash just to keep track of those actual numbers, even though they all get it. Um, we're at 65%, and when I first started in the district, we were in the low 40s. Hmm. So, um, so I'm not sure if that's Yeah, I mean, this program is run through HUD, through the federal government, so they have a pretty specific formula, and so it could be that that one just uses different metrics, right? Um, uh, yeah, but we don't really have a, a, there's no ability for us to challenge the formula that they use, unfortunately. <coughs> Census um, survey that ACS that gets done. Do we have any public comment on this agenda item? No. Okay. Continue with council discussion. You know, I think the main decision we have is how long do we want to wait for. Right. You know, and for the restrooms in Memorial Park. I struggle with these bathrooms in our town looking like this for over two years. Is really what it comes down to for me. I, I like the straight shade structures and other stuff. Right? I I hate the pleading impact fee dollars to the tune of four hundred thousand. But also, we're having so many more events. Chamber's doing a good job putting on more and more stuff there. I, this is this is just not King's Creek to me. I think we're better than this. So mm -hmm. it's taking a long time. I'm not. I'm not comfortable with it taking two and a half years to get these bathrooms. Through. And I think our public works department has made repairs. So, th I mean, this was the yeah, vandalism, yeah. but yeah. I, they don't look as ba bad but today as that, those pictures. But, but this isn't yeah. the first time you yeah. had to go in and make right. repairs either. It, I mean, it's a, it's a regular occurrence. I mean, one of the things that we try to do before a bigger event is clean up, keep them closed, and then open them up for the event just to kind of prevent any issues. And there, should not be what appears to be stucco or plaster and yeah that's just not that's just not a public restroom anymore cinder block and doesn't yeah those else. those are being done when I came on board and there was some question about that yeah That's like a long time also to me uh, 
two years for whether we remodel them or <clears throat> get the fab ones, you know. So I don't know. It's a little bit on us. I mean, we need to take yeah. some accountability here. Yeah. At least I feel like I do because we didn't project this out two years ago like we should. So now we're in this spot because of that. Um, you know, so that's not in any way the fault of the Aid or Parks or anybody else. This is just something that we should have probably allocated maybe even three or four years ago to start looking at doing these things. But now here we are. So as much as I don't like using impact dollars or looking at other options, I, you know, this just we're, but we're better than this. It needs to get fixed, rehabbed, or replaced, I think, prior to the two-year mark. So I would be against it being a C. In the council uh, comments or discussion? Okay, so recommended action is to well designate Memorial Park restrooms rehabilitation as proposed proposed C D B G project or to submit the application so yeah we could we, and we could look at we could we could look at maybe trying to accelerate the schedule as much as possible i mean they in the past have essentially said hey if 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 you begin work before you get the agreement you're basically taking a risk um, we certainly wouldn't wouldn't be able to do the design before they finish the environmental but if the environmental's finished but we just don't have the contract yet because i think it takes like three months to get through the board of supervisors we might be able to you know maybe the city could take that risk and do the design without having the contract and then we would be you know that much more ahead when we do get the contract and maybe go out to bid bid in the fall of 2024 instead of the spring of 2023 so i you know i don't i don't know that there's some a magic way to accelerate the schedule to you know, have them done in the next six months, but we might be able to swing that forward if we're willing to take a little bit more risk. So. Daniel, how often do you guys have to go over there and uh, you know clean up vandalism? It just varies. I mean, it varies on what activities went on, time of day. Um, it, it just really varies, but it, it is often. Whether it's high session, whether there's a camp or activity. I mean, some of it just happens just because of the heavy use as well, too. So I know we require porta potties for special events, um, and that's just so that it can accommodate the use of people. The, the bathrooms are, are basically what you'd get at, at a house. Um, and I mean, like, that's, you know, they can only take so much toilet paper. So once there's issues there, so then it just kind of compounds some of the other issues. Same thing with the soap dispensers and the, uh, the paper towel dispensers. The sink usage. So, Daniel, I had a question. So, <clears throat> you you brought up the porta potties. So, there's two porta potties there, if I remember correct. So, the city is providing those porta potties at. So, for chamber it, events, chamber. Um, I don't know what the accommodation is for that, um, but we do require them just so that they can accommodate uh, the usage of the park. So, okay. so once once events are done, the porta potties go, go away. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. Yeah. Which is ending shortly. Yeah. Tomorrow night's the last one. If I can, I guess an option is if uh, it sounds like you don't want to wait, which um, I guess we can ask the question of the county as to whether or not we could accelerate this this year to potentially get reimbursed and if the answer to that is no then it's not a project that we go forward with and if the answer is yes then we'll submit that might give you some just because of the, the turnaround that we have to have we can certainly ask the question i don't i don't know that that's going to work but their biggest concern honestly though is making sure that the money gets spent so you know um it's something that we can explore. So are you suggesting um, talking to them using a tax fee and then asking if we can get reimbursed the tax fee? Y yes, 
Yes, essentially us saying we're going to do this project. We're going to try and do it sooner. I mean, we'd have to figure out what's a realistic, even if we said tomorrow, okay, you know, we're going to, the council's direction is to move forward with this ASAP, we'd have to have a realistic conversation about what that timing would look like um, just because you get into, you know, different construction seasons and we have events that come back in springtime. But um, if we did the project and said, okay, but, you know, will you reimburse us in the future year? I don't know if they'll consider that or not, if the work is already done. But we can ask, and then if the answer is no, then, you know, we don't seek it as a project then. Then our CDBG dollars just roll over. Next roll over, year. yeah. And then next year we'll have 100 and Hopefully 100, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, that's a good idea. Takes anywhere between four to six months, um, and then it's just coordinating after the bid goes out to, to get it installed too. So there's, so there's a time that, yeah. yeah, the path foundation's electrical and all electrically mm -hmm. run sewer and so forth. No, I don't think we'll have the same PG&E issue though, because because there's already power. Sooner, yeah. two year mark. <laughs> um, it's just a matter of whether or not we can get reimbursed. If not, we're going to kind of take it in our impact fees. Mm -hmm. And we can't use CDBG dollars to supplement this in any way to where we pay for this, we pay for impact fee dollars. But I know with Athwell, with those bathrooms, we ended up with a lot of extra costs for the additional concrete build outs, the additional electrical. Can we use that? What would be a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars in those CDBG dollars to add to this after the fact? I don't think so. Has to be new. I think yeah, they want to. They want new. They want their funds to drive the project, not oh. reimburse you for some other project. That you and a lot of that has to do with the the federal environmental process. You're not supposed to do any work until that that's complete. It's so. Mm -hmm. So if I'm to make a motion, what would I say? Yeah, I know. How do you word it? <laughs> just, I think it's just direction. direction. Okay. We may already have that. So if there's a consensus. I'm okay with that. With Yeah. I like Alex's idea. With an expectation that we're going to hear back at the next meeting. <laughs> Okay, so I need to get a motion. Uh, can I get a motion to? It's just a recommendation. Oh, it's just direction. Okay, thank you. Next on our agenda, we have 6.3, total compensation, total compensation study, comparator analysis staff, report by Assistant City Manager Christina Windover, presentation by Christina Windover. Thank you, Mayor Palomar, and thank you, City Council, for having me today. Um, my presentation is regarding the total compensation study um, that Council approved in the last fiscal year's budget. Um, we began the total compensation study in March after getting an RFP and hiring a consulting firm called Kauf and Associates. Uh, we have our consultant on the line via Zoom and she's going to give a presentation about um, some comparator agencies and things like that. Um, I just wanted to give some background on the total compensation study. The purpose of it is for us to identify comparator agencies that are most similar to Kingsburg based on a number of factors. Uh, and that way we can look at 
um, wages, benefits, um, accruals, um, our total, you know, benefits package and wage package, and um, see where we are at com in comparison to those other agencies. Um, and like I said, our consultant Carrie will go over that in greater detail. Um, in order to provide feedback to our consultant and um, engage staff, uh, we've had uh, department head meetings about this process. We've had an employee meeting regarding this process, and we've already taken it to the finance committee um, for discussion and for public input. Um, I would like to note that originally at the finance committee there were two different lists that we were considering. However, due to public comment and discussion, we realized that the secondary list wasn't actually relevant for Kingsburg's needs. Um, so we are not proposing that today. Um, so I will let Carrie talk about the factors that go into determining what agencies are most similar to Kingsburg and then um, allow her to ask or answer any questions that you have. Um, ultimately, staff's recommendation for the 10 top 10 ranked agencies are in your staff report, and um, I'd be happy to answer any questions before we um, hand it over to Carrie as well. Any questions for Christina? Nope. Okay, Carrie, are you there and able to hear us? Yes. yes, thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to um, to discuss this as well. I can share my screen or we can just watch the slides here on, on, on the screen either way, whatever is most uh, convenient for you all. I uh, care you can share your screen if you want so you can have control over. Yes, we are. All right, great. Okay, well, um, okay, hold on one second. We lost our volume, Carrie.
Questions from council? Comments? I guess not. Nope. Questions from the public? No, thank you, Carrie. Any questions for Christina on this agenda item? You're just seeking direction, correct? Yep, just here. I'll say the same, kind of same as if I had somebody else. Do I see anything different? Do you need any further clarification on that from us? No, well, like I said, we are proposing the 10 most similar. Um, the list is there for you on your staff report. And um, once we get direction from council to approve the list, then um, Kaufman Associates um, can begin um, pulling information from the other agencies and I'll begin providing them with our information, our MOU, salary charts, classification plan, um, insurance documents, things like that for them to, to start analyzing the data. We've made it this quite a bit, actually, in the finance bill. We've had a yeah. conversation about it. Yeah. So uncomfortable. Yeah, those, those 10 look like the most comparable, yeah. you know, for, from that list of 20 for sure. surveys and they do um, ask for a lot of information um, so it really just depends on how responsive they are uh, Carrie I believe said that around four months would be about average in terms of us getting them information them getting the information and then running the numbers yeah so I think we're good with these ten cities Thank you, Christina. Moving on. Council reports and staff communications. 7.1, Community Service Commission. Uh, they met at the end of June, I believe. And the main topic was in that meeting was the dog park discussion. Uh, the discussion was about trees, lighting there in the dog park, restroom, um, the restroom structure, they're going to have a restroom there, uh, walking, I'm glad I had, was it a, was it a track or a trail? Uh, like a walking path. Path, yes. Discussion, I, I, I wrote track, walking, walking path, uh, where, where, you know, and then the placement of the restrooms and, and just a, Give a good update, you know. Adam did on that. The, the the community, you know, they kind of voted and gave gave Adam some direction on where to put some stuff. Um, 
Also, the, at, they will give Athwa Park update and on the restrooms, and I believe that started now since we had the meeting at the end of June. Right, okay. Yeah, everything was approved, and the construction will... You said they're actually going to... Uh, Delivery tomorrow of the, the build of the fab. Oh, wow. Yeah, the fabrication. Nice. Let me see here. Uh, and then Adam also uh, gave an update on the Century Home Development. Uh, the Veterans Park construction has started over there. In, in the, for Veterans Park, the construction has started over there. Are they? Oh, okay, nice. <laughs> I haven't been by there. And that was the update on that. Uh, 7.2 Public Safety Committee, I believe we meet next week. So we meet next week. Chamber of Commerce, I filled in for Laura. She was out of town. Um, they talked about, what was the meeting? It was the last Monday, I believe. Anyways, they talked about um, the Chamber uh, a mixture with United Health Center what, that was yesterday. Uh, was yesterday, with, and um, they also spoke about uh, the end of August a ribbon cutting for the police station. So, put that in your calendar. They want to have a ribbon cutting for. Uh, so I guess it's going to be finished, Alex. Hopefully, <laughs> that might be postponed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, that would be the, they did say tentative ribbon cutting, so. <laughs> and then um, they had a discussion about uh, the chamber wants a fee schedule for vendors and a vendor contract. So they want to really, uh, you know, make a, make a concrete uh, vendor fee and, and, and a contract for all the vendors to sign. I guess they don't have that, you know, right now, so. They're going to they're, the, they're going to be doing that soon. For all events. Yes, that's a, for all events. Yes, they want like just a main fee for all you know for everybody for all their events. And um, they had a vacancy on their chamber board, and they voted in Lauren Goosen, who's a real estate agent here in town. So she's the new uh, chamber member, Lauren Goosen. And they had uh, the funds for the July 4th was $13,896, what they said. That was, uh, I guess, I'm not sure if it was, I guess it was part of the Freedom Fest also. The Freedom Fest, the, the parking, and the entry fee into the high school. So. They did. Um, and they're going to continue that. Oh, they said they're going to continue that next year, but uh, they were real happy with their, uh, you know, that they, they 13000 so, but yeah. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I can speak to that. Uh, yeah, okay, thank you. The Lions Club had committed up to $10,000 in matching funds, and they raised, I think, a little under 7500 in proceeds so that we're matching that. So I don't know if that amount includes the amount that, think so the amount you just said so hopefully we'll get a full report of everything that they got but um, yeah, I believe the Magash portion portion of that was going to be donated also I wonder if that includes yeah. that those amounts also okay so. you're welcome uh, next we have 7.4 economic development we have not met thank you 7.5 finance committee nothing to report Seven point six planning commission have not met. Seven seven South Kings GSA. We meet August ninth. August ninth, thank you. Council seven point nine Council of Governments. Nothing to report. Seven ten quarterly council updates. Did I skip seven? Oh yeah, my bad. Sorry. Th thank you. Seven point eight downtown. Business Improvement District. Um, only one thing to report out. Um, they did one action item. They talked about downtown how they do the Christmas tree on each corner. And they need some more help with that and also recycling the 
Thank you, Lori. 710, quarterly council update and internal governmental committees and boards. Anybody have anything to report? I have a couple items. Okay. Just real fast. Um, the, the farmer's market and the um, concerts in the park, I think, has been really popular. I mean, I, I know people that have come from out of town, so I just wanted to give, you know, recognition to the chamber for, you know, running those events and the city for, you know, having those. Because I think they're really, really good community um, uh, items, and I think people really enjoy them. I know I do. I've been down there several times. Also, the drive-in movie night, I went over there, and, and the pool was just amazing. Dive-in movie night was, I mean, it was amazing how many people were there and taking advantage of the cool pool in blistering hot weather, right? I mean, it's been really blistering. So I think that's great for, you know, citizens and residents that they can take advantage of that. And then the other one, on a note, um, you guys may know, Laura probably may know, um, Riley Cooper, a former District 1. Oh, sorry. Did you want to talk about it? You, yeah, so Riley Cooper was, um, you know, a good friend of uh, my son, and I, I knew the family. They were um, they lived in District 1 years ago, but Riley Cooper was an excellent, is an excellent athlete, was an excellent athlete as a, son, as a, a young boy, and he played, you know, KYBL. Um, he played football with my son Dawson and a bunch of other young, you know, boys around here. And um, he was, he's a great athlete, and he went on to play at LSU, which they just won the national championship. And he was pitching in that game, and we watched him on TV, and it was pretty amazing to see him, you know, blossom into a young man. And then he went on to the M MLB. He, he basically put himself up in the, in the um, draft, and he just got drafted by the Baltimore Orioles. So I thought that was another worth mentioning, you know, Kingsburg sports, athletics, what we do here, it has a way of, you know, going forward. And there's some great athletes that are coming out of this community. And, and I thank the city and, um, you know, all the individuals that help um, get these young athletes to where they're at. And so I just thought that was worth mentioning, but that's all I had. Thank you, Dave. 711, council member reports. Last week with Devin Mathis and uh, some other community members, it was mostly just for him to introduce himself, um, make contact, and uh, talk a lot about water issues, uh, mostly for farmers, but also probably the GSAs. So um, I look forward to having more meetings with him to get into further discussions about what we can do water-wise. Anybody else? Okay.
Thank you, Laura. Only I have is um, I attended the chamber mixer last night, and Dave was there, and it was it was good. Um, good food, good drink. Um, who catered it again? It was uh, Roadhouse. Yeah, Roadhouse catered the, the pork belly. I said the pork belly was really good. <laughs> but that was my first one that I've been to, and uh, kind of maybe trying to go to some more. It was. It was Seven next seven twelve city managers report. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, an update on the 18th Avenue sidewalk uh, project uh, on the uh, west side of the street. We are uh, all those uh, properties went into escrow. We're anticipating construction in September, uh, so hopeful to see that uh, through soon. Uh, the Quick Corner gas station owner requested a 30-day extension, uh, which we granted uh, for the demolition uh, of that. Um, property just based upon some of the re requirements that he has to go through uh, with his insurance and with the uh, air pollution control district and other things so uh, working closely with uh, with that property owner uh, I think that we finally have some resolution on the business park sign the very large business park sign so I'm hopeful that um, uh, we'll be able to see that through and then be able to uh, provide an opportunity for those businesses to be able to advertise uh, now that ownership is settled uh, as mentioned, the Athwall Park restrooms will be delivered tomorrow. Uh, they won't be used right away, though, because we still have some work to do on connecting them for utilities and things like that, but um, they will be delivered there. And then uh, as part of uh, part of our cooling center, uh, we, ha we do have cooling centers available when it's over 104 degrees, but one of the other things we also do is offer, uh, we open the pool up for free. So it has been free uh, all this week uh, for public swim. And then uh, finally, uh, as uh, the governor signed a portion of the state budget, there was uh, $350,000 uh, in there for uh, the city of Kingsburg to, to be used for uh, a, a fire engine. So uh, it's good news on that front. That's all I have.
library is open also for Clearing Center, right, with extended hours? I believe they probably open those up even on the weekends. That could be true. I don't know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Alex. Mm -hmm. Next future agenda items, we have none. Next, we have the Kingsborough City Council adjourns into adjourns out of regular calendar to closed session 9.1 conference with real estate property negotiator. Good night, Alan. Good night. Thank you. Good night.